my minions. Sorry for the delay on taking over... What is it? Delfino Island, I think I'm at? Yes, Mario Sunshine. Apologies for the delay. Unfortunately, there's a problem with my microphone. Nonetheless, what we're going to do is a little side trip. I hear there's a revolution in Sarasa Land, or wherever the hell it is, and somebody's trying to dispose of the current ruler. And I say I should join him for the mu- What? The kidnap? Just pay how? Never mind, we are going to save the ruler of that kingdom because she's paying me. Her name is Princess Daisy, and yes, she rules over this land and some alien named... What? Is... What? What? Tatanga? The hell? Okay, I guess we're taking on Tatanga. Um... What the hell? There's sphinxes! And Tiki Island heads! We're not to Mario Odyssey yet! Ah, shoot. Okay, okay, alright. Things are weird. It's handheld. What do you expect? Hopefully there's some treasure, and hopefully I get paid this time. In the meantime, let's take on some weird little alien. Is this a Mario game still? <laughs> So let's start off with the plot first. There's a princess kidnapped, Mario go save. Well that didn't take long now, did it? The only difference here is that instead of Princess Peach, it's Princess Daisy. Instead of Bowser, it's some weird little alien. There's really not much else here. It's a Game Boy game, what do you expect? It's literally, other than the character change, it's a rehash. If you want to interject some things, Mario is cheating on Peach. Nothing comes of it. So, that's basically all there is. Let's take a look at the characters. For real, if the plot is that bare bones, do you really expect anything out of characterization? There's... A few cute little charms where Mario tries and makes out with Daisy, only to find that, oh, it's one of uh, Tatanga's minions in disguise, and Mario's just so flabbergasted that the thing runs off laughing, and Mario's just like, huh? Instead of killing it. But other than that, there really isn't much there. There's some charm, but a lot of it is lost on being a uh, <laughs> early early handheld adopter. Uh, the gameplay. This is where things get a little messy. Jumping is kind of awkward. You can get used to it, it's not too awfully bad, but on the same token, it, it's kind of jilted because momentum literally shifts as soon as you're in the air. Also, platforms are incredibly hard to see considering they're incredibly small. This thing's this makes things kind of difficult to work around. There's also power-ups, and you can still jump on enemies. Speaking of the power-ups, the Fire Flower is an odd ball. Uh, great, I just used a pun because you don't shoot fireballs, you just shoot balls that bounce around everywhere. It's hard to aim, but it can pick up some coins during bonus rounds and whatnot, which isn't bad. but. Like the jumping, it's awkward as hell to get used to. Again, it's not bad. It's not horrible. It's just weird. And a little jilted. Thankfully, the level design clears up a lot of this mess. <laughs> oh, there's some things to discuss there. The first thing I have to ask you before we get into level design, though. Have you ever experienced deja vu? there are games that like to repeat assets, but these levels are literally like the backdrop from the Flintstones. Have you ever seen those? When it's just the same repeating background over and over again? This is the same thing, but with the foreground. It repeats rather often. But other than that, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the level design. 
There's some creative things here and there, set pieces and whatnot. And there's kind of some creativity with the boss fights, two of which are just enemies that are kind of shooting fire at you or shooting something at you, and you got to get behind them and hit a switch. That probably sounds familiar. The other two boss fights are actually bullet hell boss fights that you can find on something like Kirby for the Game Boy. Mario jumps into a submarine or a plane and shoots down actually three of the bosses, because that includes the final boss. So besides piranha plants, smaller forms of Goombas, and Koopas that blow up when you hit them for no real reason, these other enemies don't show up in a Mario game after this at all. Except maybe Mario Odyssey? Huh. A Mario love affair shows up in that one too. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, there isn't really anything to the levels per se. There, There's things like jumping rocks that you gotta get on, you got the temples with the really good music, and then you got the boss fights. It's a short and sweet level design, but it's not absolutely blow your mind by any means. But it's not horrible either. Let's talk about the secrets and side quests, and keep in mind this is a Game Boy title. You can imagine what kind of things you'll find there. I know that it's a handheld game, but a lot of the secrets and side quests are okay at best, and let me explain as to why. For starters, like the original Mario Brothers, there are coin rooms that you can find and collect, and you know, they're kind of cool to find, because getting all the coins is kind of like a little puzzle, and it makes it more worthwhile to get the coins other than, hey, I found a room, okay, that's it. So it makes it worth more, at least in my mind. It's more rewarding. However, when you beat the original game, the only thing that really unlocks is hard mode. When you beat hard mode, the only thing that unlocks is a level select. These aren't bad rewards in the slightest. It's getting to them that can be problematic. Uh, I know it's a portable game, and a lot of people are probably going to think, well, hey, it's meant to be, you know, be in one, you know, several sittings, not one sitting. However, you can only beat it in one sitting if you're playing it on the original Game Boy, and that's where the problem comes in. You have to beat the entirety of the game, which only takes, like, what, an hour, hour and a half, maybe if you really suck at it. And then you have to beat hard mode, which probably takes about the same time. I couldn't imagine hard mode being too awfully difficult, and then you get a level select. You have to rely on battery life for this. Now, given if you downloaded this on the DS, the 3DS eShop to be specific, which you probably did at this point because, let's face facts, Game Boys are a bit obsolete, you at least have sleep mode. If you downloaded it as a ROM, which I'd, I'd recommend just doing it on the eShop anyway, but let's say you just can't afford a 3DS, you can just save whatever you want. But, unfortunately on the original Game Boy, <laughs> that didn't necessarily work. It's not a bad reward, like I said, but, eh, not the greatest either. It's not something that I reached out and went to go achieve by any means, and it's all just bragging rights in the end. But, hey, some people like that kind of thing. Overall, Super Mario Land isn't a bad game, but after playing it, you can really tell that this was one of the first Game Boy games. A actually, if you look it up, it is the first Game Boy game. And it's clear that they didn't quite know how to handle portability and Mario at the time. Back in these days, this was incredibly innovative. A Mario game you could just take wherever you wanted to? That's awesome! But it was surpassed even on the Game Boy a couple years later, and certainly surpassed by today's standards. It's not bad, but it's aged so much so that it 
comes off as almost being a bit mediocre in a review like this. Again, I'm not trying to say it's bad per se, but it's definitely not something I'd recommend over, heck, its sequel, Super Mario Land 2, which I'll cover at a later date. When? No clue. But I'll cover it. Nonetheless, it is a classic game, and if you're curious, give it a look. I certainly did, mostly because Super Mario Odyssey takes a lot of design elements and choices from Super Mario Land. So, yeah, maybe some people might be curious. But honestly, I have to give this game a 5 out of 10. It, again, isn't horrible by any means, and you can get it for pretty cheap. But it's not something I'd recommend for everyone. You have to be a huge platforming fiend and have to get your hands on everything for me to just be like, yeah, sure, try it. Or if you're incredibly into Mario. But again, I would probably recommend other Mario Game Boy games first. So, there you go, guys. Um, if you guys liked the video, this is a short video. It's just something to supplement while I try and figure out what I'm going to do with Mario Sunshine. If you like it, please feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. That subscribe button's pretty lonely, I'm not going to lie. And, yeah, if you guys like to hear more about me, um, I have a Twitter, I have a Facebook. And I don't post on Facebook as regularly as I should, but I'm on Twitter almost constantly. Unless I'm at work. Huh. Anyway, guys, that does it for today, and take care, my minions. <laughs> well, this didn't add me too much treasure, but I certainly got a lot of coins out of this arrangement, as well as some nice jewels to go along with all my power stars and coins from the previous collection, all of which is listed down below. If you're curious as to what I'm doing in between all of these games. <laughs> Take care, my minions.